opposition have got no answer. They've got no answers. Their only issue is load shedding. Load shedding resolved, there's no opposition in South Africa against the ANC. Without uh, segments of the media <coughs> supporting the opposition, there's no opposition. What uh, you can't call Herman Mashaba a serious opponent, a guy who wants to take us back to apartheid and doesn't want anything that has got to do with the affirmation of our people and all of that. Everything that was intact during apartheid, he wanted back. He doesn't even say BE must be transformed to mean something else. He says it must be scrapped. He doesn't want affirmative action. The DA says all civil servants, when they come to power, they are gone. You tell me about those people and power. Anyone who wants to vote for these people in a democratic South Africa must examine themselves. They must examine themselves because here are the people who are saying, as an alternative to the ANC, they are going to bring you back to pre-1994. <clears throat> I don't know what EFF offers. It is Father Christmas. <laughs> Depending on how the leader wake up today, he will be promising you big things. Flip-flopper of note. And uh, he changes his rhythm depending. If the big issue today is about the uh, load shedding, Julius will be on TV calling for you to shut down. <laughs> That's the revolution is leading. And there are people who follow him in that regard. So we can go to town about it. There's no principle, there's no backbone, nothing. At least in life and in politics, you must be known for having stood for something. They attack him about uh, foreigners, he changes, he's, again, he's on the other side. He's no longer very vehement on the foreigners issue like he used to as a matter of principle. Changes depending on what happens. So you tell me that those are the people who are going to come and uh, win overwhelmingly. The biggest loss of the ANC, it will mean that our people do not come out and vote in their numbers. If they don't come out, we lose. Even in the election where we garnered close to 8 million votes within a month, they could not obliterate the ANC. Our people still came out in their numbers and vote. In fact, the DA dropped. The biggest hung municipalities in this country are in the Western Cape. The ANC could not be obliterated politically. They had all the chances uh, to do so. Our people as we say, are heartful about things that get to be said and not done. And they will rather not go and vote. They don't offer any alternative. They did not go to them. If they base their analysis on the 46% that we got, that uh, it gives them hope, then why, why didn't people go to them? They didn't. They stayed at home. They were protesting at Lutuli House. David and during the campaign, people didn't go and vote. They said, why are we going to vote when we don't have water? In the middle of the campaign, we are hit with load shedding. People complained about load shedding. When I said that to Kutato that uh, I expect the polling to be at 30%, it, they then interpreted to meaning that I'm saying ANC will get 30% next year. I said the polling, when people have got no water, when people have got no electricity, how can you expect the ANC to poll better? Because these are butter and bread issues. They affect you directly. My son, when he's watching TV and there's load shading in the house, for the first time I heard him saying things. No, I won't tell you. So... That's how people, it, it affects them because he's enjoying his games, he's doing things, he's watching TV. There comes load shedding. It affects you directly. Huh? No, he didn't speak up. <laughs> so, Roger Jardine is a project, we know. We know that there is a project called Roger Jardine who comes from the family of the ANC a civil servant of note, 
and then they want him to make him a, a black face of the moonshot comedy. Uh, and that is what they want. Now, people who are fearful are the ones who are entertaining the issues of the moonshot and all of that, not the ANC. Um, so Roger Jardin is a project of moonshot and of the DA that uh, is going to be their face. Um, they will say no. They will tell you, no, there's no such a thing. We know it. Uh, we know that project. We are inside that project. We know it. And it will not succeed. But as long as others continue to entertain it, it is fine. But Roger Jardine himself, it's up to him. He wants this legacy politically to be to disappear over moonshot and betraying the liberation struggle, he can do that. Anyone does things. Botera, they went to form COPE uh, using the name of uh, the, uh, the former president, who over time has clarified that it's got nothing to do with COPE, but they went nonetheless. That thing of removing the president triggered their their anger about Pulugwani conference to form an organization. It triggered. It was something that led to them forming an organization. It triggered them. It assisted them. And they used the name of the, of the former president to form an organization. When the ANC took a reckless and a wrong decision to remove Tabombeki, when he was left with a couple of months uh, to, 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 to become... Uh, to get out of... Uh, yes, it was a reckless decision. Why do you remove somebody who has not stolen from government, who was doing his job? You sit down, you remove him. What did he do? That's the man who was supposed to ask a question, then Zendu. He didn't. Mantashe arrived there as the Secretary General told him. He left. He said, what time? He wrote a letter, addressed the press conference, left. He didn't fight over it even though he had all the reasons. Then it triggered people to form an organization because something had visited them, losing power in Pulugwan. You wake up, you were a national chair. You wake up the following day, you are nothing. I mean, uh, you were Terra Ligota, well-known, Robben Island, uh, UDF. You're gone. You're, uh, you wake up every day, you've got uh, withdrawal syndromes. So... What do you do? You form a political party. That political party is dying a natural death uh, as we speak now. Look, ANC leaders, um, what we are facing with Ezulwini is not an ANC obligation of failing to meet its own obligations. It's not. It's a fraudulent matter. And I've addressed the issue. The ANC state of finance is stable. But politics and uh, financing the liberation struggle is expensive. Just got demands every day. To organize marches, to print T-shirts, all of those things are not cheap. They need money. Now, ANC members do contribute to the party, those who are in business. be accused I can tell you right now, I was in O.R. Tambo region. This one who donated one million, how many tenders did he have? And I said to them, and I'm repeating it now, donate to the ANC for the sustenance of your ideas and your belief in this revolution, but do not get into fraudulent tenders. When you got a tender of 12 billion, in government, you've got a proper business you are delivering. Donate. They don't donate up to one million. Donate up until 99 so that you don't declare. Donate. Like Mutsipe. 100,000, whatever that it is. Mutsipe. Donate to the ANC. Patrice. And donate also to other political parties. It's not fearless because he doesn't owe anybody any corruption. Yohan Rupert at least told me once. I see now he's fighting over comradeship. He said, I won't give the ANC money, and I don't support any political party. I don't know how truthful he is. 
And I was not asking money from him. He was just eventually saying challenge yeah he was not asking anything from me he's a, he's a he's a billionaire he was just telling me what he thinks at that moment now uh, in conclusion i'm saying to you that the anc is in a sound financial situation but we've got our difficulties and one of our obligations is to pay our staff and uh, that's what we do um uh, ANC leaders who've got money, they must donate to the organization. And we go to them every day to donate. And others bravely so they do. On the other side now, they are telling us that we must go. Yes, Investec uh, CEO the other day, he was speaking bravely. A product of BE. He got into that Investec through a policy of BE. In over a period of time, he got to be CEO. Today, they are telling us that it's time to go. But after they've finished on the table what was there, they then say, no, we must go. And uh, it's not going to happen like that. Let me tell you, we do have the capacity to respond to everyone. But that is not our way of doing things. And that's why we say, ANC veterans cannot be the first ones to decampaign the ANC. We are here. I'm here at Lutuli House. Whether I saw when I was in Algeria, people said Mbalula ran away from. I was in the NWC meeting, which was not held here. And I called the sheriff. I said, what is this movie you are organizing? He said, no. Hey, this is not a movie. The truck was just passing. I said, what is your problem? What is this movie you are organizing there at Lutuli House with some truck there? How can you come with a small truck? I mean, that thing will fit only this. <laughs> and they come here, they organize a movie, Emma Shengi must explain the whole day. At the end of the day, if we are found we don't win a case, we have to pay, we'll pay this tax. But what is cock? That's what they say. Now, Nishogu would when Coca Jan, Ikalo Laz would be a league, Bub Kevin, Coca Kanja. Umtu Mamjala, you don't go to you, you, you Coca, you pay, you sit down with your debtors, you find each other, you make arrangements. We owe taxmen a lot of money. Yeah. Paul Mashatile, when he came in here, there was a, we were also faced with the same thing through banks and all of that, that we must pay our obligation. Even now, Gwen Ramukhupa is paying. I saw some report uh, on uh, City Press when I was in uh, Algeria. Uh, that report is wrong. But Kola Kola Yongindo, because uh, there is this big word insolvency and liquidation. Which political party like the ANC will allow itself to be liquidated? 